Hi, welcome or welcome for the first time. If you're new here, my name is Luis Cota and I'm a search engine optimization specialist. I do most of, most of my work on Upwork and I've been doing SEO for about less than two years. It's gonna be two years in, yeah, around August and uh, it's been going great. I'm making this quick little video to kind of talk about where I've been in terms of doing SEO work, uh, where I'm headed and just future goals. So if you wanna learn more about that, let's jump right into it. I don't really have a structured video outline for you guys today. I kinda of just wanna talk about where I've been at, what kind of work I'm doing now with SEO and some of my future goals. And so I am still doing SEO, obviously. I do it as a freelancer on Upwork, for those of you that don't know. But those of you who follow me would know that. And so right now I am in the process of thinking about building a new SEO agency. And I put out a poll to see if you guys thought that would be a good idea. Um, I've heard from some people that I work with that it could be a good idea that I start my own agency. And this video is gonna go, you know, a little bit everywhere. So it's not really a structured video. It's kind of just giving you guys some thoughts on where I've been at and where I'm going with uh, SEO. But the good news is that there will still be SEO videos in the future. But uh, yeah, just right now in this point uh, in my freelancing career, I think it would be a good move for me to do build an SEO agency because, you know, I've been going, I'm going to try to not share too much information just because out of the respect uh, for other people uh, that I work with, but I've been working with um, one company and just to be transparent with you guys. And um, I'm pretty honest and I share all the information that I'm going, going through on my YouTube channel, but I've been working with an agency and uh, it was all going fantastic. It's going great. The only thing is that, you know, what was it about, call it about a month ago or so I asked for you know, fair compensation. So I asked for a raise uh, just because I knew my skills were improving substantially enough to where I could ask for a raise. And I'm not gonna tell you guys too much, too many details on in, in regards to the pay amount, but just know that it was a fair amount and uh, and it still is. I still work for this uh, particular agency. Now the, the agency that I work with, they've been uh, kind of giving me the cold shoulder, so to speak. And what does that mean? It means that, you know, communication was really good in the beginning when I was getting compensated at a much uh, lower rate. And after I asked for the raise professionally, you know, I, you know, I wrote an email and communicated back and forth uh, appropriately. Uh, I just let the owner know that, you know, I'm looking to get a raise because I've been doing new assignments that are of high importance and of high, really, really high quality to not only his business, but anyways, all of that to say is that after I asked for the raise, I've been getting a lot less work, right? So if I had a certain amount of, of hours per week, now it's dramatically less hours of work per week. And as the life of a freelancer who does happens to do SEO, so me, um, that happens, you know, that, 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 that could happen to anyone. And so I guess for all of you watching, I kind of just want to give you some tips on what not to do um, so that you guys don't make the same mistakes as me. So if I had some tips for my subscribers who are thinking about doing SEO related work, freelancing in particular, um, I would say whenever, it depends on your experience, right? But if you're first getting started, you will obviously have to take like a, a lesser pay. So I'm just gonna throw out some numbers. So maybe that means 15 an hour, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 an hour, whatever it is, just to get your foot in the door so that you start working uh, with someone and you can start building on your experience. And after that, you can eventually raise your rates a bit further. Like if you get a new client or if you work with a new agency owner, uh, a client and an, in, and an agency are different things, right? They're um, an agency owner, they get the clients, right? But you can also get a client through Upwork, uh, just doing manual outreach, uh, submitting job proposals basically. So there's two ways to get clients at the very least. There's more, but I'm just gonna mention those two. With that said, whenever you apply for a job, yeah, you do wanna apply and get paid less, but over time you're gonna get paid more. But if you're thinking about, if you're at the point where you're thinking about applying to a new position, you think you'd be a great fit for that company, then don't put the least amount of hourly pay that they're offering you, even if that's a lot of money to you. So let's say someone's paying you, I'm just gonna use like a really basic example, but let's say someone's paying you like a rain, they're willing to pay a rain, anywhere between $10 to $70. Uh, you obviously don't wanna take the least amount or, or let's use a better example. Maybe this uh, agency owner is willing to pay you $50 an hour up to $100 an hour, but you wanna get the job, right? You want to bid an amount that your competitors are not 
bidding, which is a terrible strategy uh, because it's a losing it's a losing battle. You, you never want to ask for less money when you know you're worth more, even if you think there's a potential benefit to do that, uh, which is what happened to me. I basically um, I asked for like the least amount of money possible that I thought was appropriate uh, at the time, but little did I know I was still underselling my services and my hourly rate. So basically don't don't under underbid on a, a job proposal. You want to make sure that you are in a decent range. With that out of the way, I don't want to share too much information. So out of respect for for these people that I work with, I'll just say that I spent several months working with uh, this agency in particular. I won't give any details or any revealing information, but I was asking for like a smaller, a small amount of hourly, like an hourly rate. And I basically just asked for a little bit more, right? I knew that that work was extremely valuable. So I just figured I'm going to try and, you know, negotiate a better pay because I, that's what I'm worth at the very least. And I still kind of, I bid a, a good amount, but I think there was still a little bit room of room to, to do even better. I negotiated some new terms with the agency that I'm currently working with. I'm not sure how much longer I will work with them in the meantime, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at. And after I asked for the raise, I basically, I had like a, a good a good amount of work. I'm sorry about the lighting. I had a good amount of work that I was doing on a per weekly basis. And I am working with other agencies, but the work is really low at this point, which means I need to increase the amount of um, uh, bids that I put out on Upwork to, to compensate for that. With that said, after I, I, after I um, asked for the raise, all, a lot of my hours, obviously, well, at the time I didn't know, they got cut. So if I was working 40 hours, now my hours dropped to like five to 10 hours, which it was not that many to begin with because I was one agency that I'm working with. And um, yeah, I, you know, um, that could happen to anyone. So don't ever undermine or underbid for how much you think you're worth, even if you're a beginner. Uh, that happened to me and I ended up paying the uh, the consequences of, of, um, of getting my hours cut for a lot of the work that that I know that they still need, but they don't want to give it to me now just because I increased my rates. But it's it's really dumb because at, at the end of the day, mathematically, they'd be paying me the same amount if they dropped uh, my hours. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to share that, I guess. It's sorry if it was not too coherent. Uh, this is the really like one of the first times I've been, I've tried to explain it and trying to explain it to subscribers can be, you know, to, to you guys. It's difficult because, you know, I, this is, it's not easy. It's tough. It's tough working for an agency. I know I've like I I preach that it's a good idea to work with an agency and it and still is. Uh, it's just this one incident is like a, like a one time thing. It was kind of random that I didn't think that the people that I were working that I was working with and still am would be so unprofessional to the point where they could have just easily said, no, I'm not going to pay you your your new rate, your new proposed rate. And that was fine with me. I, you know, I, I was fine with that idea because I would have found another agency to work, work for that would pay me that fair amount for my experience and for some of the additional SEO training that I've undergone. So, um, yeah, just know that sometimes whenever you're asking for a new raise, some companies uh, can be unprofessional in terms of instead of firing you or letting you go, they just, they just cut your hours when you're dealing with them online. It's a lot easier for them to maybe be like, well, now I'm just going to cut your hours dramatically and I'm going to assign you these other tasks that are less meaningful and have less of an impact overall in SEO. And I'm just going to give you a lot less. So that's where I'm at. I am working with another agency and they're they're great. Most of the agency owners that I work with are actually phenomenal. But just uh, as it relates to getting paid more, that's when uh, agency owners start getting a bit weirded out, I guess. They just start getting weird. And some people just don't want to pay you more, even if you are worth. So I just wanted to share that information. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, this video was like all over the place. So I apologize for that. I know that some of you will probably find some value in this. So I figured I'd share that. I didn't know it was going to be about this if I'm being completely honest, but it's been, I don't know how long it's been since I posted the last video on YouTube. I know I've had some requests from some of my subscribers, you guys, that you guys want to see more technical SEO videos, how to get new clients, um, how to get new local SEO clients, which is a huge topic. Yeah. And more, more videos 
as it relates to SEO. But with all that said, there's still some good news. I am thinking about starting my own SEO agency. I was speaking with a, a mentor of mine or someone who I consider a mentor and they thought it would be a good idea to perhaps, you know, for me to start my own SEO agency. I had considered that for a long time, if I'm being honest, or a long time as if I've been doing SEO for, for such a long time. But when I first got started in SEO, this was back in 2021, I was working on Amazon at a fulfillment center, a warehouse. I really uh, did not like working there, if I'm being honest. I just, it was not for me, but at the time I had dropped out of, out of uh, university and I just figured what I was studying was not a good fit for me. And also it wasn't really my goal to go to university. It was more of a, for whatever reason, it was just me trying to please my parents with, with uh, education that they never received, but they wanted me to have a better life. And um, so I was going to school basically like for them, so to speak. So it was, it was never a really good fit for me. I dropped out and I ended up working uh, just regular jobs. It was not anything digital marketing related, but I always knew that I had like an entre entrepreneurial mindset. I didn't, I didn't love the idea of working for someone else. I was okay doing that for a short amount of time until I got like on my feet, so to speak. And until I could do my own thing, maybe build my own company or agency, just something that I'm, I'm working on now. I've been fortunate enough that after working like at a lot of um, companies, I just realized that I do want to like build my own path and start a career that can allow me to have to reach new goals and uh, milestones that I didn't think were possible. And so my entrepreneurial journey, which is still going on right now, and it's it's part of this video, uh, it dates back in uh, on August 2021. I ended up doing a lot of research. I came across many professions, some of them being like copywriting. I don't remember the other ones like affiliate marketing. And, and I think one of the last options was SEO. I started doing copywriting at first. I figured that was not a great fit for me uh, because my writing skills are not that great. And so I figured, okay, let's, I'll just try SEO. I'll, I'll take what I learned from copywriting and um, I'll just learn SEO. So I did some research and I figured out Coursera had a, had a decent course for the, for the price. I did, I think I, I think I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I spent, I took like two to three weeks to complete that course. I spent a long, like I spent like all day just learn, learning the material from morning to night, whenever I could fit that into my schedule after work, you know, uh, doing DoorDash deliveries, etc., cetera, um, which was the thing I was doing for a long time until I could do SEO full time, which is what I'm doing now. Yeah. And I got my first opportunity doing SEO related work around. So I started in August. I got my certification maybe several weeks after August, September, October, it must've been like around October. I had applied to several positions on Upwork, but let me backtrack. I got my certification from Coursera. Like the day I finished that course, it's coming back to me now. I remember thinking, okay, now I know like the basics of what I have to do to optimize a website from an SEO point of view, search engine optimization for those that you that don't know it. Like on-page SEO, work on the technical, work on the off-page, do a little bit of social media, which is not really SEO, technical SEO, etc. But then I thought, okay, I have my certification now what do I do with it? You know, like how do I start getting paid? How do I make money? Was uh, the common theme that I was thinking through in my mind at the time. So then I, I did some research on that. And a lot of the information that you find online regarding how to get a job on, on Upwork is, I mean, on for SEO certifications is not, it doesn't feel like, like it's good information because it's kind of like, oh, just apply to an SEO position on Google or on Indeed, LinkedIn, whatever. But when you have no experience and you just got your certification, it's, I'll say this, it's extremely harder, as you can imagine, to get a job in SEO with no practical experience or ha or you don't have any results that you've obtained for other, other clients. So I remember, I don't remember how I came across it. I think I remembered, uh, I remembered a long, from a long time ago, there was a website called Freelancer, I think. And I think it's still out, but it, I don't think it's a good website now. And I remember thinking, oh yeah, there's like Elance or there's Upwork. So I went on Upwork, I created a profile. I'm like, this website looks a lot better than the other one. So I'm gonna go with this one and create my freelance profile. I think I struggled finding <laughs> what sort of categories I should have for my job. I, yeah, I think I, I selected what I thought was the best option. 
I don't remember what it was, but I selected like digital marketing or content writing. I don't remember what I chose a long time ago. Now it's fixed. Yeah, I spent like all day applying to as many positions as I could. And at the time, they didn't have like the connects or credits, whatever they're called, for you to apply to an open position on Upwork. So you can apply to as many jobs as you could or as you wanted to at the time. Now it's different. Now you got to pay for like the uh, connects, I believe they're called, but they're not that expensive. So I applied to probably dozens of positions that I thought, okay, I read this job description. They need an SEO specialist. Um, it looks like they need A, B, and C, or maybe they just need like a fix my title tags or update my meta description, you know? And at the time I didn't know how to deal with like WordPress, Shopify, like their interface and how to actually do it. I knew I needed to do it. I didn't know like how to do it, to log into the CMS and how, where to go, et cetera. But I just figured I'll try it anyways. Um, so yeah, it took me a few weeks to do that. Then after doing that, I heard back from three people. It must've been around the same days and they told me yeah you know what i saw your um your application I'd love to you know schedule a time to speak with you like a zoom call that's what ended up happening i was so excited at the time i thought wow someone's willing to jump on a call with me to interview me even if i have like no experience and that was like the most shocking part because i thought who'd be willing to give me a chance i barely had i just got like my certification not too long ago and you know there's uh there's some great people in the world who who took a chance on me and i'm uh i'm forever grateful for the opportunities that i had to work with them i don't work with them now i keep in touch with with some of the people that that i worked with in the past and uh in particular i had one person and put me through like a, like a special training. It's called like uh, the blueprint. I learned a lot about SEO there, not only from the course, which was insanely good, but also working behind the scenes for their agency. Like I just, it's nothing compared to getting your SEO certification from like a website like Coursera, which is great. I, I still recommend them a lot as you'll know, cause you'll, you'll see if you see some of my older videos, but the knowledge gap or the difference between what like an like a more beginner person knows that just got their certification versus what people are actually working on behind the scenes on a website to build an SEO strategy like a long term campaign, which is what they call it. That was really um, eye opening and informative to to have the privilege of working with some of these really great, smart and talented individuals. And um, yeah, I remember I, f I finished the course that one of this uh, these agency owners put me through, the blueprint. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, they teach you everything, like how to do on-page SEO, off-page technical, whatever, how to generate leads. You basically know a, a lot of information on how to start your own agency if you really wanted to. So knowing about that, when you're a beginner, it feels like you kind of like skip the line. Like you, it feels like you progress your career five years, seven years in advance when you shouldn't know that information because it just feels like, it feels great to be honest, but it's not too helpful if you are a beginner. Like it's still insanely good course, but at the time, what was it last year or so, I, uh, I was not ready to maybe build my own agency. And now I'm at the point where I've worked with uh, several agency owners and I got to learn like how they do SEO, what their, what their processes are in terms of what they do behind the scenes, like how they build their content briefs, how do they do keyword research um, to begin with, how to do a website audit, how to do on-page SEO, technical off-page content and coming up with different strategies for them. I got to learn all that. And I am at the point now where where I see it's almost, uh, it's it's cool. Like it, it's almost like I, I would feel confident doing SEO work as an agency owner or as a freelancer. Like I'll do the work as an agency runs their agency, but I'm still a freelancer, um, but I'll just like be commanding bigger prices. That's the only difference. I'm at the point where I feel like that'd be great to do. And especially after like, after asking for a raise with this one agency and seeing how a lot of the amount of hours that I get to work are, are controlled by them, I don't want my my earnings or the, the workload that I do to be in the hands of someone else. So I'd rather take charge and give myself as much work or as little work as I want and charge clients whatever I, the amount I think is appropriate to charge based on the results that I believe I can bring their business and website in particular. That's kind of where I'm at. To be honest, I've had some calls with some people who I'm trying to close and get get like my first uh, 
agency client. It's been going great. I had one yesterday and um, I was like this close to closing the deal. But uh, they told me that they that this particular person, they told me that they were going to go with a bigger company that does like everything like website design and uh, SEO, social media ads or whatever. But they told me that they may come back and work with me so that I could check on their work. So I thought that was pretty cool. I let them know that, yeah, I would uh, give them a quote whenever, when that time comes, if, uh, if they needed me. So I may get that client in the future, who knows? But if not, it's no big deal. I'm still like working really hard to build up my leads so I can get my first client uh, as an agency owner. I'm excited about that. You know, that's my new journey right now. And I kind of just want to share that, put that out there. There will still be new videos related to SEO. So I'm going to make my videos a lot better. I will be putting a lot more thought and emphasis into new videos, whether that be how to do on page, keyword research, technical SEO. I had one subscriber ask me how to get leads for like local SEO. That's not too hard. And I say that's not too hard because getting leads, getting someone to like reply to your emails or your phone calls or your job proposal on Upwork, that's one thing. But converting that lead into a paying client, that's a whole nother skill set. And um, that's something I wanted to mention. I will cover that topic in the future, but it is, a, it is a big topic, if I'm being honest. An exciting one, but yeah, I'm excited about this new journey that I'm going on. I never thought that only being like two years into, not even two years, I think I've only been doing SEO for maybe like a year and a half almost a year and a half that I've even considered starting my own a SEO agency. But if I hear it from someone who's already an agency owner and I consider them a mentor figure uh, just because they give insanely good advice and they're, they've been extremely helpful to uh, for me uh, in a lot of ways. If they tell me that, then oh, my computer just almost died. Then I'm going to follow that advice. You know, um, it's exciting. It's going to be hopefully not too difficult, but I've been applying to kind of close more deals so hopefully uh, in the future i do want to share more of that information it's something that i'm not too well versed in just because i'm a, I'm a beginner in how to build my own agency but yeah i'm still going to be making videos uh, related to seo so i hope you guys got some value out of this video it's a bit longer than usual but for those of you who care about where i've been at what i've been doing um yeah, this video is is for is for you guys. If you guys want to see more videos like this one, then uh, yeah, just make sure to leave a comment below. Uh, maybe I can give some advice if you have any um, SEO related questions, entrepreneurial questions, uh, drop them below. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, check out some of my other videos. All right, bye now.